Hey everyone, welcome back to the All Pro Show. I'm Captain V, I'm gonna take you on a journey today. But before I do, I want you to hit that subscribe button. If you do that, it informs you whenever I put up some new videos and you don't wanna miss any of these videos. You do have to email us your address because we wanna send you a free package of our All Pro Teaser Grubs. These are chicken sparkle teaser grubs. These are those grubs that you put on your high low up on a higher hook and you get all that great action on here and uh, you'll run maybe a bucktail down below. You can run it off a three way if you want. You run it any way you want. I'm not gonna tell you how you run your, your uh, teasers. But this is a uh, four inch teaser. It actually stretches out to about six inches but we call it four inches. We don't wanna get anyone confused. Uh, very cool stuff. Hit the subscribe button then go to all pro team at allprocharters.com. That's the email address. And you want to email us your name and your address so we can put these in the mail to you free. You're not even paying for shipping. It's free. All we ask you to do is subscribe. Take care of that. We'll have some information up here on the screen. Those magic things that pop up. You'll see that. Do that cool thing. Let's get to it a little bit, real quick. I just want to mention this because I got it in this week. I kind of think it's kind of cool. Chasing Bates made a new squid. Now, when I say new, it's kind of new to the United States. I'm thinking maybe it's six months, eight months old. I don't know anyone who actually fished these yet. I didn't fish them. I just saw some cool videos about them online. I bought a few packages. You could get them over on Amazon. How I rigged it real quick, because they don't come rigged. They just come like this in a pack of three or two, stuff like that. And what I did is I used uh, my rigging needle. I used our All Pro fluorocarbon. I think this is available online. It's inexpensive. It's been independently tested. It's good stuff. You don't need to spend big bucks for fluorocarbon. Um, here it is. I run a line through. You could do that a couple different ways. You could snell your hook first, then grab the line, or you could grab the line, pull through, then snell a hook. Any way you want to snell, you snell. Uh, it doesn't matter. You just got to get the job done, right? So then what we do real quick is we want to pull that hook through and up. Now, some people like their hooks a wiggler. Some people like wigglers. There you go. Now you got a little trailing wiggler hook, right? No, that's great. Okay, I don't. I like to set my hook in. So what I do, ah, I pull it up. I push my eye in. And now I have my uh, rigged squid. I'm going to put a little bullet sinker on here off of a little bucktail here. And uh, we're gonna work it, okay? And it's gonna come, come up. It's gonna come down. It's gonna come up. It's gonna come down, and it's gonna get eaten. I think so. Very cool. Look at those eyes. I mean, is that insane? I mean, what are they gonna think of next? Look at that stuff. It's great. It comes in glow and some other stuff. Not all that expensive. About the hook. I'm a hook up guy. Some people like hooks to the side when they're fishing for fluke. Okay, cool. So you turn it. There you go. Look at that. Magic. I'm like freaking Houdini here. You know what? You want to hook down to the bottom? Bada boom, hooks on the bottom now. Now you can fish your hook on the bottom. Hey, whatever floats your boat, that's what you do. Let's get to it. Striped bass. If you're fishing for striped bass, you're going to want to fish a Tony Maha spoon. The name has been around forever, and that's because it's been successful forever. There's other spoons on the market. They're very cool. They do work. People catch fish on them. More power to you. I think some of them are made to catch more fishermen than fish, but that's here or there. If they work for you, you go with it. I use a Tony Maha spoon. I like the Tony Maha spoon. Tony Maha is not a supporter of All Pro. They don't sponsor All Pro, and they don't give me anything for free. Trust me, I get nothing for free. I use the Tony Maha spoon. These are mine. I bought them. Uh, this is a chartreuse. I use the number four adult bunker. Why do I use that? Because most of the time when I'm trolling my spoons, I'm out in the ocean. The bunker and the bait out in the ocean are about this size or maybe even a little bigger. And therefore, I like to kind of uh, match the lure to the size of the bait. So that's why I go with a, a size four. Uh, there are smaller sizes like a peanut bunker spoon and so forth. Uh, I think they call one a herring spoon. I don't use them. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying you should match the size of spoon to the bait that's in the water. Uh, this is their uh, chartreuse. I love it. Very good spoon. This is a uh, multicolor spoon. I love it. Very good. But then you have the one that I always fish. 
and that's the white. Whenever I start fishing, whenever I start trolling, I'm always starting with at least one white. I always put a white in the water. I love white. White's been successful for me. I always go with white. Uh, yes, I will drop a, a chartreuse, you know, maybe off the other line, but I'm always starting with the white. Uh, been successful. They make a chrome spoon. As you see, I don't have a chrome spoon. Why? I don't use a chrome spoon. Why? Because I catch fish on the white spoon. Now, many people use chrome spoons. They work. They're good. Keep using them. I'm a little, you know, maybe not so settled upstairs. So I stay with my white. I like it. Now, be honest with you, if I'm not catching him on the white, I will change up, but I start there. And it's not like I am against chrome, so all you chrome addicts, don't go crazy. When I'm fishing my tins and stuff like that, and I'm casting, I'm using, you know, different type of lures. I use chrome. I don't know what it is. I'm, maybe it's a little mental thing. I don't use chrome on my spoons. I, I don't know, but it, it, it works for people. Okay, I want to show you, though, more importantly, everyone knows about the spoon, okay? I'm not going to teach you uh, about the spoon itself here. I just want to teach you some accessories about the spoon some of the ways you can run a spoon better so real quick the key of the spoon is you want the spoon to rock like this but more importantly you got to get that spoon down in the water column where the fish are that's the trick you know you got to get it down so a lot of people will run wire line uh, I am a lead core guy so I'm running lead core there's guys that run braid, and what they use is a drail sinker in the middle there to drop it down. There's guys that will use a three-way and uh, put a mojo on the bottom to get this down. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not saying I never, ever, you know, fish that way. People can say, oh, I saw you fish that way. I know you saw me fish that way because I fish every way, okay? I'm just telling you what I prefer, and what I prefer is to run a bunker spoon alone all by itself, nothing. I don't want any interruption from my my line, right, from my reel, right out to that bunker spoon. I want it one smooth thing. I want it to be free. I want it to go. That's why I use lead core. That's why I uh, also use, I want to introduce you to, a heavier keel. A lot of people don't know these even exist. Tony Maha makes a 12-ounce keel. So this, I'm going to guess, is probably closer to an 8-ounce keel. This is a 12-ounce keel. So, what we do is we unscrew these. This pops off. It comes with screws. You don't need them. Why? Because you already got the screws from these. But, you know what? You get them, you screw it back on. Now, maybe Tony Ma always leaves, uh, puts this little label on here. Tighten your screws. Tighten your screws. Tony, I've been fishing your spoons forever. I never had a loose screw. Ah, you know what? My wife might disagree with that. Maybe I had a couple of loose screws, but never on the Tony Maha spoon have I had a, ever had a loose screw. But maybe if you're switching them out and you're going to be putting new screws in, they might get a little loose. You want, want to use maybe some Loctite on there to make sure that uh, they don't come off. You don't want to lose your keel. They're not overly expensive, but, you know, you don't want to lose it. But see this keel here, that heavier keel? will get you down in the water with all without any of that fancy contraptions and stuff like that. You don't need to use a drill or egg sinker or you don't need a mojo to get down. That's it. Uh, from my understanding, from what I'm told, the rule is 10 feet of line out drops this spoon down about a foot. So, you know, you got to let out some significant uh, footage if you want to get this thing down into the 30 or 40 or 50, you know, foot water column area. Also, another little trick to the trade. When you're running these, I use Tony Maha rods, okay? I love them. They're made for these things. I mean, you get the action. It's crazy good. You know exactly if your spoon is running properly. It tells you. It screams to you. We're running good. We're moving right. Hey, listen. People like me, we need that stuff. So that is great. Those rods are great. I don't have one here to show you at the moment. They're actually still on my boat. But... Um, you should look into uh, that type of rod or that rod itself to run your spoons. That's the only thing you run on those rods uh, is the spoons. Also, real interesting is the <coughs> hooks on these. This is an 8 hook. That's what my guess is. I'm pretty sure it would be about an 8 hook. Now, if your synthetic bucktail gets chewed up a little bit, you switch these hooks out. And what I would recommend is you switch them out with a Tony Maha stinger hook. 
They come in a couple different colors and so forth. And um, so here's your dual color, your chartreuse in green. And here's a white one. And all you do, take this out. <clears throat> What you do is you're gonna take it out of the bag. You got two hooks here, not going anywhere. Now you get your split ring. The split ring right on here. So the hook is not attached to the spoon directly. It's attached, connected with the split ring. And you're gonna just simply enough, just hit the split ring and go. Little tip, I digress. For some reason, someone showed me early on that you hold your split ring this way with that point up. And I say for a good year or so, I'm always going like this, trying to, you know, get it. And it does work eventually, but it doesn't work that good. It's really made to go this way. And I discovered that kind of myself. Why? When they make these split ring pliers, you'll see there's a notch in there. That's because that's where this finger goes like that. If you go this way, it's not there. The notch is here. Something simple. I know you salty dogs who've been fishing for 100 years. You know, you know this stuff. But a lot of people just getting into the game. A lot of guys just starting trolling. A lot of guys just got their first boat. Got their first mo uh, first uh, trolling spoon rods, you know. And uh, they don't know this stuff. So I just want to go over with you. Make sure you have it right. When you're doing your split ring pliers, your point is down. It goes right in there then. No problem. Boom, bang, bing. Da, 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 da. New one off, one on. No big deal. Also, since we're talking about trolling, I spoke a little briefly about rods. I use a Shimano Takoda 700 LC. LC stands for line counter. I use a line counter. I like using a line counter. I'm not into that colored line. You know, they got those, those measured lines. Blue, red, green, yellow. Who's going to remember, you know, okay, got a blue, that's four feet. Uh, yellow, another four feet. Red, uh, blue again. Red, blue, blah, blah. How far am I? Listen, it's real important that you get these in the right spot. You got to use a line counter. Now, for all you real manufacturers out there who may be watching this video, somebody, anybody, give me a line counter reel two-speed. Oh, why two-speed? Well... Because when I'm trolling and I hook up with a fish, I'm not a guy who wants to stop the boat and put in neutral. A lot of times I'm fishing by myself or I'm fishing with one other guy and I don't want to stop my boat, okay? What I might do is back it out of gear a little bit, but I'm not stopping the boat. Two reasons why I'm not stopping the boat. One, if I get hooked up on one line here, well, guess what? Freddy the fish ain't swimming by himself. There's other fish in the water. I want to keep going. Remember, when I'm trolling, I got my spoons on the outside. I got some mojos on the inside. I'm pulling a spread through the water. I'm hooked up. I'm pumped up. I want these other lines to go too. I don't want to just stop the boat. Everything sinks down to the bottom. The tide gets me a little bit. I curve a little blah, 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 blah. I get stuff tangled. And I don't want to do that. I want to kind of back down just a little bit. But then if I had a two-speed reel with a line counter, which I can't find, if you know of one, hit me up. Um, I can just pop that into a low gear, and it's a little bit more manageable uh, bringing that fish in. Now, with that being said, let me just talk about speed a little bit. Okay, I beat to a little different drum. I admit that, okay? I like to troll initially about 3.2, 3.3 miles per hour. Yes, depending on the current and the conditions and which way uh, we're moving with the waves or against the waves and stuff like that, it's going to adjust my speed. I'm just giving you basics here so you have some numbers that you could kind of start with and see where you're at. It also involves the action on those rods. You got to get a nice little pump. So if you're not getting a pump at 3.2 miles per hour, guess what? Go a little faster and get that pump. Or make sure that you don't got a bag on here or you didn't snag on something. And that these are running smooth because they got to run properly, okay? Very important. They got to run uh, right. They got to have a good presentation in the water. So I run my boat about 3.2, 3.3 miles per hour uh, if I have good conditions. And I got a good pump with that. I don't have a problem, again, with those Tony Maha rods. They're perfect. Um, 
But some guys, most guys are running their boats at 4 miles per hour, 4.2 miles per hour. You know, and it's difficult for you to be fighting a fish, you know, going that type of speed. Especially, I'm not talking about your 10-pound uh, striped bass. I mean, that's what this show is about. This show is not about your 20-pound bass or your 25 or even your 30-pound bass. I'm talking about 35, 40, 45, 50-pound bass, the big boys. You know, when you get the big boys on the line, you know, you need to be able to keep that line tight and uh, keep tension on that fish at all times and get that fish in. That's why uh, I would back the boat down, keep it moving. Something else I want to bring to your attention, which is a really supersonic product. Now, I admit, this is the Lamborghini of the industry. No doubt about it. We don't all drive Lamborghinis. Technically, I don't even drive a Lamborghini. I'm a pickup type of style guy. You know, I drive a pickup truck. But when it comes to my fishing gear, I like, if I could afford, I like to have the best. And sometimes the best just costs you a little bit more. And the Tony Maha Outriders, the best. That's it. I, let's, that's it. Case closed. The best. Now, do you need them? Are they going to catch you more fish? I don't know if more fish are going to jump on your line because you got them. I, I'm doubting that's ever happening. But it's going to make your life better. You know, like anything else, you spend a little bit more money, you get a little more toy to it, a little more accessory to it, a little more trick. So I just want to show it off, show it to you first. There's plenty of these outriders that you could buy. You know, they're stationary outriders that you could buy that are like 25 to maybe 50 bucks. Uh, and they're good. You put your pole in there, ba -ba -ba boom, you're trolling, bingo. The problem is, is if you catch a real size fish, you get a real size fish, the pressure that's placed on your rod holder portion of the outrider is so, so uh, tense that it's very difficult to get the rod out. Other thing, I just want to transgress a little bit too. The Tony Maha rods, they have like a, uh, uh, their butt of their rod is very smooth. It's not made of cork or any foamy material. It's very smooth. It's like a hard plastic and it will slide in and out, you know, easier. Uh, but just something to think about. There's a reason why they do these things. Uh, but this out rod here is, first of all, the quality is crazy insane. This is a newer model. Uh, Tony, uh, he went berserk. He went and he, he beefed everything up. Everything is thicker, bigger. Look at a weld. I mean, you think you're making an aircraft or something like that. It, it, it's crazy. But this one here, what you do, the difference about this one here is if you get the hit, remember, I don't like slowing my boat down. So I'm not going to be releasing tension. I do not want to loosen my drag up so I could get this out because I don't want that fish to have any excuse, any reason. It took me long enough to get him on the hook to get off the hook. So therefore, I don't loosen my drag. I know some guys do. I don't loosen my drag. I might kick my boat back a little bit. But then what I do is I will flip this up. If I flip this up, my rod comes straight up and out. No problem at all. There is a little trick I'm going to say that I use with my cotter pin. When I use my cotter pin, I will go and I will never put my cotter pin in like this. So if you go and you're fortunate enough where you can get your hands on one of these, I don't put my cotter pin in like that. Number one reason why is because when that fish hits this and there's pressure on this, again, we're talking about a good fish and there's some pressure on this, I don't want to fight to get the pot, the cotter pin out. You know, I, listen, I, I fight with my wife every day. I don't need to be fighting with a cotter pin. So what I do is I keep the cotter pin like this. It's not even protruding, but it locks in, okay, because it's through the main section. So now what I do is if a fish hits, my cotter pin will pop right out, and I flip right up. Hey, you don't want to do it that way? Don't do it that way. That's the way I do it. It works for me. I like it that way. Something that is real exciting is Tony Maha Jr. is coming to the All Pro Workshop to put on a workshop himself. He's going to be discussing all the products and how to use the products. He's not there to sell you anything, okay? These products sell themselves. But what he's found over the years is that some people don't know how to optimize the products, okay? And they have a slew of other products as well, okay? And he wants to be able to show you, you know, his customer base on how to really get 
the spoon to work as effectively as it should be. Um, how to use some of this uh, equipment that he has to maybe raise the fish up, intrigue the fish to bite. So Tony Maha Jr. is going to be there. The workshop is February 17th at the All Pro Show. You're going to go to allproexpo.com. Information is popped up here. We're going to have some, probably a, a picture here or so, and that's all cool. It's a little video. Come out to the show. Important, get your tickets online. If you get your tickets online, you're going to save $25 for, from a workshop. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Why would you want to pay at the door? Doesn't make any sense to me. If you pay at the door, you're paying more. You want to go online, go online now. Get the tickets. Get there. You're going to see Tony. And you're going to see a slew of awesome, awesome, awesome captains and fishermen and fishing women. And they're going to increase your knowledge and your ability to catch more fish. So I'm Captain V, and I will see you there.